So this little boy, Jacob, was running at full speed. He was playing with his dog, chasing him around this field when his foot hit a bump in the ground and he fell flat forward on his face. He just completely wiped out. Uh, He wasn't hurt, but his left eye was a little swollen. So his parents decided to take him to a doctor. The doctor checked him out, um, gave him a little ointment for his eye, sent him home. Eventually, the swelling went down, problem solved. And then about a year later, Jacob started complaining of having blurred vision. His parents then decided to take him to an eye specialist, and the doctor was stunned by what she found. Apparently, when Jacob had fallen a year earlier, a tiny uh, little flower seed had gotten implanted in little Jacob's cornea, and it had began to sprout in his eye. The seed had to be removed immediately in order to save his vision. Sin, in its many forms of selfishness and self-centeredness, has a way of implanting itself in our hearts and growing into something that can do damage. Sin can blur our spiritual vision and cause us to take our eyes off of Christ and His will. In our gospel today, Jesus warns us of the consequences of failing to repent. He says, quote, if you do not repent, you will all perish. Of course, he's speaking in the spiritual sense. Uh, The word repent is found actually all throughout the gospels. It shows up in both Mark and Matthew's gospel. And in these gospels, we see both John the Baptist and Jesus used this word, repent, especially when Jesus began his own public ministry. And then we see Jesus use it again today in Luke's gospel two times. And so I think it's safe for us to say that this notion notion of repentance must be important for it to show up so often in Scripture. The word repent, or another translation, reform, comes from the Greek word metanoia. Uh, Metanoia has been compared in our English language to the word metamorphosis. And so you know how a a caterpillar can change into a butterfly? We would call this process in English a metamorphosis. Friends, this is what the season of Lent is about. It is a time for us to undergo metamorphosis, to repent, to reform, to change our lives, to turn away from sin. When we repent, we are presenting ourselves to God for help, just like little Jacob was presented to the eye doctor. With God's grace, our sins can be surgically removed, and the damage can start to heal as a result, although admittedly this healing can take some time. But the longer we wait to repent, the more we risk damage. Now, repentance is not a one-time thing. For most of us, it will take us a lifetime to reject sin and turn toward God. One surefire way for us to do this, to work toward this repentance, is to utilize the sacrament of reconciliation, confession. And how do we know this? Well, because Christ Himself instituted it, as He did all seven of the sacraments. Uh, The sacrament of reconciliation is a sacrament of healing and a sacrament of forgiveness. If we step back and take a look at how Jesus interacted with others in the Gospels, there are those who had a sense of who Jesus was. They had a sense that He could relieve them of the burden of their sins. And they would go to Him and they would ask for His forgiveness. He never scolded them. He never criticized them. And He always met them with love and mercy and compassion and forgiveness. Friends, that same love and mercy and compassion and forgiveness is offered to us in a very real way in the sacrament of reconciliation. In fact, when we approach our Lord in confession, and that's who it is we're approaching, we're not approaching the priest. Uh, The priest is merely the lowly stand-in for Christ. And so when we approach our Lord Jesus in the sacrament, what we're telling Him is, Lord, If you were here, I would come find you, I would come seek you out, and I would ask for your forgiveness, just like those people did in the gospel stories. 
Now, sometimes people will think to themselves, oh, it's been so long since I've been to confession, I wouldn't know what to say or do. If you're one of those people, I promise you, the priest is there to help you. He will help you. Sometimes the person will think, oh, my confession, it would be so bad. I've done so many bad things throughout my life. I, it would just sound awful to the priest. He would probably think just terrible of me. I'm here to tell you, those are actually some of the most beautiful of confessions. The one where a person has been away for a long time and they make a good, honest, heartfelt confession. Confessing all those sins that have bothered them and haunted them for years or maybe even decades. Now I've had some people say to me, well, Father, you're a priest and you just don't understand. You don't understand all the things that I've done in my life. Let me tell you something. I did not go to a college seminary. I came to the priesthood late. I went to a regular four-year college. In fact, it took me seven years to get a four-year degree. <laughs> and that's a whole other story for another time. But at one point in my own life, I had been away from confession for more than 10 years. And I'm a cradle Catholic, and I knew better. Product of Catholic schools, grade school, high school, college, master's degree at a Catholic school before entering into the seminary. And so I know what it feels like to be away from confession and return with just a truckload of stuff. And so when a person says to me, oh, Father, you don't understand, oh, I understand better than you know, because I understand from the inside out, I've been there and I have done that. Those confessions that we hear as priests that are 5 and 10 and 20 and 40 and 50 years out are some of the most beautiful confessions. We love them as priests because it's almost as if we can feel this weight just being lifted off the person. And that was my own personal experience as someone who had gone back to confession after having been gone for more than 10 years. So if you haven't been to confession in a while, if it's been years or even decades since you've been, there is no better time to go than during this season of Lent 2019 to return to the Sacrament of Reconciliation. Not next year, not in the fall, not during Advent, but this season right here and right now. But repentance isn't just going to confession every so often. It really should be a daily thing for all of us. Uh, it should be something that we are continually working on. One of the things that I recommend to folks is that before going to bed, this is a good time to do an examination of conscience, to review your day, spiritually speaking. And there are lots of different models. There are lots of different ways that you can do an examination. You can certainly look online for models of examinations of consciences. We have uh, many different forms back in uh, the gathering space. I'll give you a simple one, though. Two steps. Step one, what's the one thing I did today that Jesus would not have done? Step two, what's the one thing I didn't do today that Jesus would have done. It's very simple. Take you all of about three minutes before you go to bed. Jesus is clear to us today about the need for us to repent, to reform, to change our lives, to turn away from sin, and to turn toward Him. He is so serious about it that He will die on a cross. But He also knows that it's impossible for us to repent under our own power. And so he has given us the sacraments to help us, especially the sacrament of reconciliation. So some questions for us to ask ourselves as we continue our 2019 Lenten journey. Are we serious about repentance? Do we want to repent? Do we desire to repent? And are we using the help that Jesus has given us in the sacraments?